And is it really true that high protein means more cancer? And then we had the opportunity to go to China to follow up on something the Chinese government had just published. Namely, they had just published a, a sort of a, an atlas of how much cancer occurred in different regions of China in a total of 2,000, about 500 counties. And so it was a beautiful atlas, color-coded and all that. And so it, it, it turned out that that atlas of cancer in China was such that cancer was very common in some places, much less so in, in other places. Uh, so uh, I had the notion, I mean, I w we were getting all this information in the laboratory, basically confirming the idea that more protein means more cancer. I mean, it's kind of a, that's kind of a, a ticklish thing to, to comment on, but that's the research we had from the laboratory. In China, I saw, certainly saw the opportunity mm -hmm. to see in a pop, human population, is there any evidence that consumption of more animal protein, animal food, if you will, is there any evidence that that might be related to, in this case, cancer, different cancers? So that was the basis for the China study. I wanted to see if what we we're doing in the laboratory, with experimental animals, I should say, I wanted to know if, in fact, we were going to maybe see the same thing or not in a human population. So it's kind of bringing the two ideas together. I had a lot of biochemical information that suggested animal protein, yes, is a problem. Uh, but, you know, we kind of had to see it in humans. And what was so special yeah. about China was that they were, the wealthier folks were just switching over to a different kind of protein, meat, and because the populations didn't move around a lot, it was a really good study to see uh, when you, you could look at areas and compare them more. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, in China, like other countries, uh, in that stage of economic development, especially in rural China, um, there weren't very many people consuming any animal protein, very low level of consumption. Uh, so it was almost in a scientific sense a perfect setting. Mm -hmm. because we, could, we had some counties that consume more, some less. Mm -hmm. uh, but all in all, they were far less than what we do. So the question there was, uh, if we saw any evidence at all that consumption of more animal protein, and it wouldn't be very much, if that had any relationship to Western diseases like heart disease, cancer, and so forth. And so that, that's really what it was. And, and we, took, uh, we actually collected an enormous amount of data we collected blood samples and urine samples. We asked questions. We had access to a lot of data on disease rates. And so it became what the New York Times called the most comprehensive study in medicine ever conducted. So we had access to a lot of information to begin to look at this question. You know, is it possible that more animal food, if you will, might be related to cancer, heart disease, and other sorts of things we see in the West? And we did find evidence. So what do we know about protein? What do we know specifically about the makeup of this macronutrient that would lead to causing more cancer? Animal-based protein, I guess I should be specific with. Well, that was the question we had. I didn't know. <laughs> and we were just simply saying if it really worked, did work that way. And we did, in fact, repeat uh, some studies that had been done in, in India at the time, also with experimental animals showing that more protein meant more cancer, liver cancer in this case. And so we repeated that, we duplicated it and got the same results. And so as I went forward and started gaining confidence, that was really true. The animal protein effect is quite substantial. In fact, very substantial. Then I had a chance to get into questions concerning what is it about the protein, like you just asked. Mm -hmm. Like what do um, we know and, now? Yeah, we sort of know more now, but uh, the nature of the animal protein compared to the plant protein uh, really had to do with the kind of amino acids present in animal foods as opposed, I mean, in animal protein, as opposed to, let's say, plant protein. Present, uh, present those, or over-present? Like, are, is it that there's, you said, the, are there some amino acids that are not in plant foods that are in, in uh, meats that are damaging, or is it just that there's too many in meat? Well, it, just, it really has to do with quantity, and we require about 8 to 10 amino acids. We have to consume them, if you will. And the ratio of one to another makes a difference. Mm. It turns out the, the ratio, the composition of animal foods, is such that the amino acid arrangement, if you will, is close to what we have. Now, surprising, we're animals. 
And so, in contrast, plant proteins, they have some uh, amino acids that are lower, limiting, as we say. And uh, I can tell you about some of those amino acids. I mean, in animal proteins, they tend to have more of these sulfur amino acids, uh -huh, which yeah. has, you know, that's one thing, methionine, cysteine, if you want some names. When we consume these sulfur amino acids, given that they have sulfur in them, then when that sulfur is excreted, if you will, uh, converted, it's converted into an acidic ion. And that creates more acid in the body. Mm. That's one little, little observation that distinguishes between animal and plant proteins. Plant proteins don't, they, they don't, they're deficient in, the, in those amino acids. Ah, okay. So that's, when we say a high... But, that, but that's only one explanation, by the way. It's just one. There, could there are be many, many other reasons. Yeah, there's some other reasons too. Anything that you'd like to share that you feel our audience would benefit from and that isn't too in the weeds scientifically? <laughs> so, let, me, let me show we you got a pretty question. sharp so That's for me, Dr. Campbell, because I'm afraid I won't understand. <laughs> well, let me, let me change your question a little bit. Not so much in, in terms of how much of each, in, each individual amino acid might be there, but instead, let's make the question, you know, what do, what do proteins do in our body when we get them, when you consume them? You know, what, what happens? What kind of mechanisms are created to cause that response? There we see a big difference. Ah, uh, okay. Animal oh. proteins, mm. maybe for sort of, in one sense, a little bit of subtle reasons, not big differences in amino acid content, but nonetheless they have profound differences in terms of, let's say, elevating blood cholesterol. Oh. Mm. Animal proteins increase blood cholesterol. Mm. That in turn is associated with heart disease. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. remember in your course you talked about how everyone calls meat a high quality protein and it is a high quality protein but we don't want to have a high quality protein in our diet so that that term is mis can bias people towards meat mm -hmm. when actually it's you know sort of like having high quality what meth <laughs> you don't really want it yeah <laughs> can, can, can you explain that that's because obviously the word quality in our society is you know synonymous with good and something that you that you want to go after so why don't we want that kind of let's if it's it, it shouldn't be called high quality then if it's if it's not right. for humans i mean it's high quality for i guess lions i don't know but um what yeah could you explain that yeah it sounds like you took our course Yes, yes. Yes, we both did. We both did. <laughs> okay. That's going beyond that because I'm writing another book that's just about done, mm -hmm. sort of dealing with that question in more depth. Uh, the whole idea that uh, animal protein is higher quality is uh, other than the perception that it must be good. Uh, in a scientific sense, it has to do with measuring how much of the amino acids consumed from the protein actually is retained in the body to do all these good things. And by that, I mean grow, grow the body faster, create more hormones and stuff like that. So it turns out animal proteins have the ratio of amino acids in the right proportion. It, a higher percentage of it is absorbed in our body. Therefore, animal proteins could generate faster rate of growth better than plant proteins. And they call that, if you can see my thing, they call that high quality. Yeah, air quotes. Yeah, air quotes, yeah. Yeah, and Got just it. because, okay. uh, quite frankly, um, and then the animal in that case was retaining more nitrogen. Mm -hmm. that, but, but the point is, later in, years, in subsequent years, it turned out that uh, why would we want to retain more, more amino acids? Because to grow cells faster? Yeah, okay, it might be worthwhile during growth, although not the best. It grows cancer cells faster too. Hey folks, okay. Back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long. Does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep.
So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.